Prime Day, a day where we celebrate one of the most rich men in the world, Jeff Bezos, and ascend him to godhood via sales and consumerism. Jeff Bezos, who is now known as the Lord of Free Shipping and Drone Bombing household, uh, Households with Consumer Goods, should be known for depreciating work conditions and crippling entrepreneurship in America. Prime Day, for only $99 a year, you can make sure that mom and pop live under a bridge that was constructed and contracted by Amazon. Amazon has been known for competing with its own sellers on its own website. Amazon has become the retail marketplace by virtue that most customers go to when they make a purchase. Half of the economy is going to Amazon sales, and if retailers want to be seen and sell their inventory, they have to go and be on Amazon's platform. Jeff Bezos owns Amazon, Whole Foods, and the Washington Post. At this point, he's controlling news and every aspect of consumer goods, and with this tactic, he is going to make his way to own Wall Street and the banking industry. Give it Give it like five years and a few more spineless Congress people, and we will have a merger of the United States government with the God King Bezos. Some of us might be thinking, well, this is good for small businesses to be part of Amazon. This is a really good thing, but in reality, it provides them with no incentive and is usually crippling. Companies like Harry's Famous Flowers in Kentucky went out of business because of online shopping. And when they did get online, they weren't getting any traffic on Amazon. They got a few orders, and by the time that they paid the Amazon fees of $40 a month and the 15% of sales that go to Amazon and the gas for the delivery, the net gain was $6. Jeff Bezos wanted to make sure that Harry would not be famous for his flowers, but rather his bankruptcy for even thinking about challenging Amazon. Mount Bezos makes a big deal and brags that 58% of the sales are coming from third-party retailers, but in reality, most of that is in fees that these sellers have to pay to be on Amazon. I mean, this would be like renting out a cubicle at your office job, okay? You're basically renting out your own misery. That's what you're doing. That's what you would be doing if you were part of Amazon's platform as a third-party seller. And not only do they charge these fees for being a part of their marketplace, but Amazon is known to steal the products of entrepreneurs and give themselves top billing on their own platform. This was the case for a headphone seller uh, on Amazon. Her products started to do really well, and then Amazon rolls a replica of the product on their own and is now on the top of every search. Amazon has no fees to pay, and now the entrepreneur is f paying fees to lose. And this is happening in lieu of Nate Sutton, the Associate General Counsel at Amazon, assuring Rhode Island Senators that this was not the case. I'm, I'm fairly certain the churches of Scientology are less shady than Amazon business practices. Amazon is also known for its horrific treatment of its employees, from being timed for bathroom breaks to nosebleeds due to cardboard particles in the air. Workers have described Amazon as a modern-day sweatshop. It is modernized at the fact that uh, bosses will text them before they are flogged for taking an extra 72 seconds in the bathroom. Right? These kind of pressures have known to and do cause mental and physical stresses on humans. Bezos' own paper, The Washington Post, reported that there was once a dead baby that was found in one of these warehouses. Okay, can, 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 can someone just tell Bezos that dead baby jokes are often not funny, so dead baby realities are significantly worse? Now, Bezos has said that he pays his employees at minimum $15 an hour. Now, they also reported that Amazon has increased wages by a solid 25 cents an hour. What what a noble lord and god king, right? Just because you met the bare minimum of wages from 2012 doesn't mean you get to dictate pee breaks and extra brutal conditions. Plus, a bunch of Amazon workers from their corporate sector to their warehouses and even their app-based drivers 
are temporary workers. This means that Bezos and his Amazon compatriots don't have to cover health insurance or provide them with any benefits. Well, except the benefit of the glory of being in the shadow of the great God King Bezos and his angel of dictatorial work schedules. Amazon has repeatedly been flagged and penalized by OSHA, yet it continues its operations exactly as it always has. And when Democracy Now!'s Juan, Juan Gonzalez asked his journalism students to file a Freedom of Information Act request from OSHA about Amazon. They got a 100-page report, which was mostly redacted. They claimed that there were secrets about Amazon's business model that they can't reveal. Yeah, you know, the, the same way that Guantanamo Bay can't exactly tell you how they waterboard people, Amazon can't tell you exactly how they cheat workers. A lot of employees have also said that they don't feel like these warehouses are made for humans, and they are right. I bet they aren't made for humans. If you think, of, if you don't think that this shabby treatment of what God King Bezos would call meatbags for rent is not on purpose, then you haven't watched the robot apocalypse movies like they are prophecy. Okay, you're 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 probably still allowed at most movie theaters in your community for not telling people that the robot revolution is coming and we must prepare ourselves for it. Look, Bezos isn't dumb. He and the other neo-feudal capitalists are prepping for automation. Robots don't have to pee, they don't have babies, they don't eat, they don't sleep. They will pack and ship prime orders nonstop till Bezos has so much money that, that the mass of all his cash is causing the Cayman Islands to sink. And, and some of these robots will pleasure him sexually with the sound of PayPal transfers, which is probably the only way Jeff Bezos can ejaculate. And on top of all of this, Amazon Web Services hosts Palantir, a tech company that has surveillance equipment that can track people's backgrounds and connections and family with just their name. In conjunction with Amazon's facial recognition software, these are being used for immigrant deportations illegally by means of ICE and are incredibly invasive. I think it's safe to say that Big Brother is no longer watching us. He has been put out of business by Jeff Bezos, who, much like the Judeo-Christian God, is watching us everywhere, especially in the damn bathroom. And now Mom, Pop, and Big Brother are living under the Amazon bridge. Jeff Bezos' marketplace will not only discriminate against entrepreneurship and employees, but also the consumer. Eventually, with the collection of enough data, the platform will show people in various income brackets specific products and block them from others. And if Amazon continues to exploit new ideas by stealing them from the working class people, that bankruptcy will create a new low class Amazon worker who has to shop at Amazon and get products that are dictated to them by Amazon. And if you don't fall in line, the God King will offer you free shipping to the land of the dead. Amazon is a hosting site for small businesses that have an online presence, but it's also selling their own line of goods and services. This is a monopoly of supply and demand. Amazon is becoming everything and on the verge of dictating what we do and don't need. Unless we fight to break up this service, things are going to get worse for employees, consumers, and the spirit of a competitive and collaborative marketplace. Prime Day will not just be another consumer's holiday, but an unbreakable law to feed into the growing expanse of the Bezos ego and sociopathy. At the current moment, our society has found itself in what economists like Dr. Richard Wolff and Anand Giridharadas call a neo-feudalist era. This means that we're in an era where the world is not run by democratic rule of the people, but rather by the most financially wealthy and the most exploitative. You know, instead of potato farms, we have server farms. Instead of castles with moats, they've got these massive headquarters where poor people used to live, and uh, they're surrounded not by a moat, but like by, by just like a sea of old, broken desktop screens. So if you're a Prime member and a consumer, I'm not 
here to shame you and tell you that your worship of a false god and prophet is evil and that you're no better than Bezos. I am here to tell you that this is the reality we live in and we can change it. We can go out and support our local entrepreneurs and provide help and aid to former Amazon workers. I know Amazon is convenient, but at this point, the convenience fee is dystopia ruled by an unfair and false god king.